Good morning to the, everyone present out here. On behalf of the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, National Institute of Technology, Sikkim, I, Shivani Priya, welcome you all to Building Proficiency in Academic Writing Workshop. Today, we have Mr. Dr. Khagita Acharya to grace this second session of this day with his presence. Dr. Acharya is an Assistant Professor of English at Kathmandu University, Nepal. He is a Faculty of English Language and Literature and Communication Skills to the undergraduate students and Research Methodology to the graduate students. Dr. Acharya received his Master's and Master's in Philosophy degree in English from Tribhuvan University and PGD in Journalism and Mass Communication from MIGMU. He completed PhD from Kathmandu University and Nepal, and his thesis was titled Literary Configuration of Personal Experiences, Violence Experiences, Sympathetic Aftermath, and Social Identities in the Most Partitions Narratives. He has interest in trauma and social identity, trauma literature, college in creative writing, critical theories, Western philosophy, and English use in media. His articles has been published in both the an interdisciplinary journal, Terrorism and Political Violence, European Journal of Social Philosophy and Narrative Inquiry, among others. He was co-editor co -editor of both the an interdisciplinary journal from 2007 to 2013. And currently, he's an editor of literary studies and language editor of Nepal journalism of biotechnology. Dr. Acharya is a receptionist of Massive Scholarship 2009 from the Government of Israel, Scholar in Resistance Fellowship 2010 from the Forum on Contemporary Theory India, Manisha Sreshta Memorial PhD Scholarship 2011 to 2014 from Kathmandu University, Erasmus Scholarship from European Union and Faculty Research Grants 2010 from UGC Nepal. He was a visiting scholar in the University of Limerick, UL, Iceland, September 2013 to 2014, under Strongity Scholarship and adjacent faculty at the University of Limerick from 2015 to 2018. We heartily welcome you, sir, to this session, and please grace this session with your kind words. Thank you, Sivani, for uh, this introduction. Uh, my huge apologies for the technical. It's really struggling. My camera is intermittently on and off in that condition. If I just turn off camera for uh, better sound quality or better uh, quality, I think it will be fine. So I request for your permission for that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tripathi, once again, and uh, thank you very much uh, to all the participants for waiting uh, for, for this long time. Uh, it's really, it was a huge struggle. Uh, I was there, but I was not audible once, and next time, ECO was uh, just disturbing, and I thought, with ECO, uh, it, won't be, uh, it won't be a fine presentation. Actually, it so happened that uh, the area in which uh, I am living uh, is undergoing a con undergoing construction work. And uh, because of that, I'm now in office, vice chancellor's office, and uh, I'm speaking from a bigger hall, maybe because of that, there is ego. Uh, uh, and my apologies for all these things. Uh, I don't want to delay. We're already uh, late by, I think, 20 minutes, my huge apologies. Uh, let's start. I uh, request for your permission to start uh, my session today. Thank you once again. Uh, uh, I'm presenting uh, the slides. Uh, I think I'm granted permission to. Uh, Dr. Acharya, please go ahead. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay. Thank you. Now uh, it should be visible. I'm showing you the slide. Okay. Uh, today's uh, presentation will focus on identifying research topic and writing literature review. Uh, I'm not sure if I will be able to ju do justice to both these topics because of 
the uh, because of the technical problems but uh, let's try to uh, make maximum use of the time uh, dr tripathi uh, is the slide uh, visible there yes yes it is uh, visible you can make it full screen it is visible i can see it uh, the participant can also see it very much visible okay now okay now uh, i use uh, the full screen you are in the middle, let's uh, think the, the beginning part in selecting a resource topic the uh, based on the approach that i have used is knowing yourself so you start with this process and when you are in the process of knowing yourself you ask questions related to four major issues what's your level by level label that you are in are you undergraduate student or a graduate student or a postgraduate student or you are a faculty member or your position is something else the first thing is to uh, think about or to know the label you are in it's very important in selecting research topic next thing uh, you pay attention to is the discipline you belong to because uh, resource topics are discipline specific too of course we uh, we talk about interdisciplinary and cross disciplinary resource topic of, of which we can discuss later but taking into account the discipline you belong to is equally important so are you from humanities or social sciences or uh, medical sciences or engineering or any other discipline? You think about that as well. Next thing uh, to consider is the phenomena that you want to study. Uh, is your concern micro level phenomena? Possibly you are interested to interested at the happenings which happen in a private bank in your locality or you want to find out why particular society uh, gets engaged in that quarrel. In that sense, your concern is of major level. So are you uh, interested in particular phenomena or means micro level phenomena or major level phenomena, or are you interested in problem of uh, problems or the conditions? So you need to get answer to it as well when you are trying to uh, know yourself. Next thing is the pragmatics. Why am I doing research? Why am I selecting research topic? Is it to get grants from the agencies? Is it to pass exam or is it to publish a journal? The list goes on, but I have written a few only. Knowing this, uh, these things, uh, these aspects help you identify or select research topic uh, later. If you are uh, searching for grants, if you are working on uh, a topic that granting agencies uh, granting based on the uh, grants that granting agencies provide, of course you have to use different approach. My point so far is. Your selection process should begin with knowing yourself. If you do not know, uh, you will be asking question, can you please help me with the resource topic? These days I'm getting uh, around 10, 15 requests asking for resource topic. The reason I'll tell you later. So I said the first task is to know yourself in these terms. Once it's done, Okay, then the next thing I recommend you to do is discuss with peers and seniors. Let me share my experience, uh, experience of uh, a couple of days back. Uh, I am uh, a, a medical doctor, spinal cord injury surgeon. Uh, we're working on uh, epidemiology of spinal cord injury in Nepal. And we happen to discuss this issue with people from other domains as well. So we invited, we invited faculties uh, from psychiatry, we invited faculties uh, from physiotherapy, and there were other faculties as well. 
And it was, uh, it was interestingly uh, a, a topic which is not, which was not thought by any of us propped during the discussion. One friend proposed to do research on delays in uh, delays in rehabilitation center admissions after discharge from hospital and uh, the trauma into the intermittent trauma. So see, we were discussing with uh, other friends and that discussion was, was useful uh, for us. So discussion with peers might be useful. Uh, I request you to do that too. Another uh, thing you can do is recommend, read the recommendation section of thesis or research articles and review papers. I want to show you uh, a, a few research articles. I mean, of course, there are thesis as well, and how re referring to these sections uh, are helpful, uh, I want to show you. So I'm opening uh, a video file uh, to show that. Uh, please uh, permit me. I'm opening thesis. It should not take long time. If you see uh, uh, this topic, uh, uh, instructor training and instructional design in online courses using group work. So this is the thesis of already approved. Uh, I think it was approved in 2013. So uh, I, uh, as per the recommendation, uh, I'm going to base number recommendation base. It's in page number 145, I'm typing directly. If you see the recommendation section, you find, you find a number of suggestions there. Let me go to that section, because I'm telling you the way you can figure out topic for your research. So it says, while it was not possible in this study, research needs to be done on the instructor teaching an online class using group work they did not design or develop. So the researcher clearly states what topic can be started. I started this aspect and if you if you want to do if you want to work on uh, this issue maybe studying instructor teaching and online uh, using group work the the design of the course was not prepared by the instructor himself or herself so see it's really a good suggestion in that sense and there are a number of other suggestions too let me show you another uh, thesis uh, and uh, it's more comprehensive it's more comprehensive, that's why I'm showing you. Let me go to the base in which uh, uh, the, uh, the scholar has written recommendation. If you see uh, this section, uh, 8.5, it says current study only focuses on cottage size enterprise registered with FNCCI. So future studies should also focus upon entrepreneur of medium and large scale enterprise as well. So from here, we know what possible topic can be worked on. There are a number, if you see, this is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. So this study suggests around eight, nine topics for you to work on. So I was saying, you can refer to the recommendation section of thesis. I had also said you can refer to uh, you can refer to the uh, review articles. Let me show you a, re a review article. In this review, epidemiology of worldwide spinal cord injury, uh, there is a recommendation section. Of course, articles do have recommendation section. Page number seven. If you see conclusion, uh, a few sentences after conclusion, there is recommendation. See this sentence. Therefore, how to further reduce the incidence of SCI and improve prevention and treatment measures to promote the prognosis of SCI patients are the problems that we should study in the future. So it clearly articulates what topic can be studied. Now back to what I was saying, 
Uh, I was uh, uh, suggesting you to read recommendations section of thesis research articles and review papers. Another, uh, if you have time, so remember what I had said about the constraints you need to take into account. So what am I doing? Okay, my task is to submit paper, submit uh, a resource paper to pass examination. If that's the case, you cannot afford to review literature yourself and then find uh, the topic that can be worked on. But if, let's say, you are working on a larger project, you have time, it's feasible. Let me show you uh, 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 the review paper that we wrote, uh, which finally came up with the, uh, the recommendation section. Let me go to page number eight. This is a uh, work which is which was published in 2019. I did it with my students. So uh, in my university, uh, we carry out uh, research work with students. We encourage this way. So uh, I was a lead and then all these students uh, uh, worked in the project uh, with me. And they belong to totally different discipline. Uh, one student is from mechanical, another is from pharmacy, another is from chemical engineering, another is uh, uh, from electrical engineering. So we have students, uh, or, or the collaborators are from uh, different disciplines. We did, uh, we did a review, and that review reached to a conclusion. That conclusion is written here. So it's a part of, it's, it's written as a recommendation. Possibly one approach to addressing this issue might be using concurrent mixed methods wherein qualitative grounded theory is complemented by quantitative research. So it says, if you are studying students' perception, you use this approach. So it's suggesting the, uh, the possible topic on which you can work. It's also suggesting other aspects too. Back to the point that I was trying to drive home, I said, while you are selecting research topic, discussing with peers, reading recommendation section, and doing literature review will be, uh, will be, will contribute significantly. But you need to take into account the factors that I had mentioned earlier. Let me go to another slide and I will make it a bit uh, bigger, so full screen size. Once you have, uh, you have, let's say, uh, you have reached to certain states, states in which you think that this can be tentative topic for me, then you have to think in terms of this reverse pyramid. Think in terms of re reverse pyramid, by that I mean you start where you are. Are you somewhere already, are you in the, in this stage, in this stage of discipline, sub-discipline? Are you uh, a bit, uh, are you in the, I'm sorry, are you uh, in the specific concept of discipline or at what stage you are? And then you have to funnel down to, uh, funnel down to specific research topic. You have to work further from that stage. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, then again comes examining. So it's a process, reiterative process of knowing yourself and then doing some work and examining yourself again. Once you think that this is the topic I'm going to work, think in terms of your interest. Will you be? Will you uh, sustain your interest for for the time required to do research? In many cases, it so happens that you start research, but you cannot sustain your interest. What about the expertise? If you are a student uh, in university, you want to work on uh, a neuroanatomy, but you don't have faculty in in the university. In that case. I think working on that will be really arduous, almost uh, near to an impossible task. So think in terms of expertise as well. What about funding and what is the duration you have? Once you 
finalize the topic, you again reflect on that. So I just suggested based on my experience, the process of selecting research topic. Then next one, what is the next? The next, a bit more important question which is why question related to the topic selection. Am I going to work on this as a part of a concept paper or am I doing a review on this topic as a part of concept paper, as a part of proposal or as a part of research paper or article or thesis review? Is there any problem? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think there was disturbance. Uh, my apologies. Uh, why am I telling you need to ask this question? Because once you select research topic and think of doing a review on that topic, you have to keep in mind for what purpose you are doing. If it is concept paper, for concept paper, you don't need to make very comprehensive review. You don't need to uh, write very comprehensive review. Proposal, bit more comprehensive, but is not is not as much comprehensive is in the case of other documents. If it if you are writing standalone article on that topic after reviewing it by standalone, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there are other times as well, narrative is, narrative review uh, on the topic, or am I doing scoping review, am I doing systematic review, am I doing meta-analysis, or, or any other standalone article I'm going to write on the topic. Think in those terms too. So, these are the considerations. Just uh, let me uh, show you the slide from the beginning so that a sort of coherence is maintained. Very quickly, I'll show you. So you start from knowing yourself, then source the avenues, then make your topic more specific, then think about these, uh, uh, these, uh, concern, these issues, and finally ask these questions. Once that's done, okay, you have research topic. But what next? I try to cover the first part. But the second part is yet, yet to discuss. What next then? Okay, you have a research topic. What is the next thing to do? Okay, next thing that we generally do is deciding source engine. So which source engine to use in searching? Especially in case of novice researchers, they do in general web sorts. They, they sort, they use these sorts engines, Google, Yahoo, or, 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 or other sorts engines. As a researcher, if you start that way, maybe you are in a wrong track. Go to specific sorts engines, the database. So I'm introducing you with the specific type of websites you have to visit. What are these websites? It's not comprehensive list. Again, please keep in mind. And these uh, in these sorts, these uh, 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 these sources are also subject specific. If you are working in, let's say, medical science. If your topic is uh, from medical science and you want to write literature review on that topic, maybe sourcing uh, in Eric will not contribute uh, to that. It will not help you find appropriate articles. If you are in education, probably sourcing in PubMed will not contribute unless it has to do with medical aspect of education. So these are some of the database which you have to refer to. If you find uh, it difficult to, uh, to figure out which database is appropriate, you can do just general web search with the words like database for electrical engineering or database for humanities, database for uh, medical science. If you write that you will get a list of database and you source and that. So 
immediately after you decide the topic and then think about uh, uh, the possibilities thereafter, next task is to decide the source engines. Okay, then what is the next? The next, once you decide the source engine, you start doing appropriate search. It's very important. How to do search is very important. You search with keywords. By keywords, I mean the words which you have in your research. If you are, if your topic, let's say, is energy efficient building after retrofitting, your keywords will be energy, energy and efficient and building and then retrofitting. This will be the key terms in your topic and you have to sort with that. So sort with the key terms. And next thing, if you uh, if you uh, know about it, I think will be useful. Truncated sorts is next one. So if you uh, if you do sorts with sourcing, if you try the word sourcing in that bar, maybe you will find a very limited uh, limited uh, articles. But if you just write S E A R C H, then uh, uh, you will find a large number of uh, a large number of research articles. And another term, if you know, I think will be useful, that is wildcard sorts. Using uh, like WS and then hysteric, it shows all related to uh, all which have WS80, WSY, WSE, and so it's wildcard sorts. B, then question mark, LL, if you write, it can be BALL, then BELL, BILL, any, and any later uh, may come there. So, Wildcard search is also useful in searching. Then next, you have to specify, which I already said, using quotation mark. So if you do, uh, if you write, uh, let's say, uh, with, the, uh, with the example that I had given, energy efficient building uh, within uh, uh, quotation mark, if you write, you'll find articles which have all these three words together. That's uh, the benefit of using quotation mark. Another, you can use Boolean operators. I think it's a very common thing. I should not explain later in question answer session. Uh, we can discuss. Another can be descriptor selection. Uh, if uh, there will be questions, I'll, uh, we can discuss about these things later in Q&A session. Once uh, you decide the, okay, you decide uh, the database, then you would uh, you use appropriate strategy to source. The next thing that comes is the machine that you will be using. There are multiple machines uh, of this type. Reference management software, you call them. So reference management software, you have to input or you have to transport the relevant articles from the database to uh, these machines. And uh, there are thousands of uh, such uh, uh, reference management software. For your kind information, uh, the software like Javrev, Dossier, they are totally free. You don't need to pay. Uh, the uh, machines like uh, Mendeley and Zotero, they are free up to certain capacity, but you have to uh, pay if you want to, uh, if you want to use of larger capacity, whereas RefWork and EndNote, they are commercial, you have to buy. The only thing that I'm trying to tell is what you find relevant in database should be transported to these uh, any of these devices. So that's the next step. If I'm faster, I'm just uh, going back to slide and then showing uh, to uh, make sense of what I discussed so far, I said, don't use this uh, 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 this uh, uh, general wave source. I said you prefer this one. Then what you find relevant in these database should be transported to should be transported to these engines. I think now it makes sense. Then next one. 
Now you have articles. Okay, these are the articles I'm going to I'm going to review based on what you are doing. I am writing concept paper. I need very limited articles. Okay, I'll review must relevant only. You don't need to be comprehensive in that case. If it is, let's say, meta analysis, quantitative research is only, then you will select those and you start reading that article. Reading is very important uh, in this process. So you have to read three major sections of the articles. One section is introduction section. You have to read very carefully to find out what particular issue is studied is studied in that paper. Next section is the method one. So what particular method is used there and what are the findings? You take note of all these things and how these notes are used, I'll discuss later. Important thing to note, please do not rely exclusively on abstract section. I've seen scholars using information from abstract section and writing the entire literature review. There are numerous disadvantages of that too. Just word of caution I wanted to pass. So what we have now, we have information of, uh, about the topic studied, the method used and the findings, the, uh, the, the findings of the study. Now comes another stage. That is, in that stage, you start feeling information in this abstraction form. You call it abstraction form. Uh, you write in, on, in this column, study ID, the name of the author and the year in which the article is published. Let's say you found uh, Acharya and Muldoon's article relevant, then you write down uh, Acharya Muldoon 2017. What particular aspect is studied? Community identity and, uh, uh, and uh, trauma experience. What method is used? Okay, this method is used. What is the finding? You have to, if you have this abstraction form, you you find writing process easier. I just uh, wanted to confirm from Dr. Dhananjay that uh, everything is going well. Dr. Dhananjay, is everything going well? Yes, sir. Everything is well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, because I'm just in front of his screen and uh, I wanted to be sure that I'm audible and things are visible as well. Okay. Thank you. So you need to prepare abstracts and form, abstracts and form from the information that you collected from uh, reading of the article. So you write that if it is qualitative research, this type of abstracts and form works. If it is quantitative study, if you uh, the, the article that you have referred to is quantitative, how do you do? So such thing appears. I'm not sure if it's uh, visible uh, well to you. If it's not, don't worry. It, uh, I can tell you. So in left column, there is study identification. Lucky 2005 is the study identification. Purpose of the study is written, research design, location, where is uh, that study carried out, what population was studied, what was the etymology, uh, what was the cause of a spinal cord injury? So, Lackey's study says 37.3%, 37.3% uh, spinal cord injury patients uh, had a uh, fall from height. So, the spinal cord injury was caused by uh, a fall from height uh, in 373 uh, participants. And etiology of accident was 6.9. So. When you have the entire information, then you go to the next step. So I said, you have to read articles, locate the information, and start putting it in abstract form. When you put in abstract form, then you have this information. What next then? I'll say, you have uh, this uh, information. Let's start using uh, the information to write. We refer to Lake. I, I just... Uh, 
uh, made it sort uh, uh, or I reduced some component from here. Lakers study, retrospective hospital based study, it was it was hospital based study, and then etiology, then uh, height and accident, injury severity, whether it was uh, quadriplexic means. Uh, severity a let's understand uh, uh, with very easy term uh, not able to move at all so if it's not able to move at all it was 46.8 percent this way uh, uh, this way we have so how can we use this information one way of using information is using the information in a horizontal way so when we think of using that information in horizontal structure and writing, what will be the type of writing we'll be producing? It will be Lahey 2005 used retrospective hospital-based study and found that falling from height is the major cause of SCI. Main disadvantage of such horizontal uh, or use of horizontal information is it reads like shopping list. Okay, you are going uh, to market today. Uh, okay, bring a 5.1 uh, kg of something, then we bring 6 kg of something, 7 kg of something. Okay, Lake said so and so, Mukhida said so and so, and Bajra Sadia said so and so. Such uh, literature reviews are considered very weak. So, my suggestion is do not use horizontal information. You rather use Another alternative. So what is uh, that alternative? Use vertical in information. So instead of horizontal, if you use vertical, what happens? Your writing will be something like Lakhe, or it will be something like multiple studies have been, maybe not multiple. So it's retrospective, retrospective, retrospective. So uh, studies in Nepal on spinal cord injuries have use retrospective uh, uh, approach. And then Lake, Mukhida, and Bazatarians, better information. So uh, instead of using this horizontal, uh, you think of using vertical information in writing. Uh, there are organization patterns. If you know about organization patterns, uh, you, it will be easier for you to write. One way of organizing can be chronological. By chronological women writing what happened in, in the beginning first and then what happened thereafter. So in 1969, uh, someone had written and then in 1972, uh, another scholar had written. If uh, I'm referring to the domain in which I'm working, it would be something like uh, Susanna Feldman and Dori Love started trauma in, in early 90s and then Kathy Carruth uh, started around the same time and then uh, I reached up to 2020. That's one way of organizing. So it can be in terms of publication, in terms of trends. That's one way. These are the two ways within chronological. Another one is methodological, by which we just pay attention to methodologies used there. about the writing approaches, then you need to know the structure as well. The structure uh, looks something like this. So the top part is preface. So what to write in preface, I'll tell you later. Then next thing that you write is general information related to the topic. If I'm working on if I'm working on Stone's perception, maybe I'll write what Stone's perception is how Stone's perception was defined, and then uh, what uh, initial scholars have said. Then gradually I go to topic-related research. I write that, then topic-focused research, and finally research camp. So this is how uh, uh, literature reviews are organized. I don't say that it's, uh, it's the only one. There are other alternatives too, but uh, the most systematic one is this one. Next thing, let me show you an example, whether the example 
uh, fits well into this format. This comes from this comes from uh, the review that we submitted and it's uh, being published. The paper reviews digitally available scholarly studies on students' perception of quality education. Following questions of particular interest while reviewing the article, so we wrote question. Some research findings suggest teaching and delivery aspect of education as the most significant, and then we wrote. If you see this one, and then uh, and uh, compare uh, or tally with what we have written, you'll find structured in this spectrum. And many of the uh, reviews are structured this way. Then, important things which you should not be doing in your literature review. Don't rely on secondary sources, is in these cases, the two examples that I have written here. Trust research, what holds marriage together, is quoted in another scholar and found that several times typical bonds had weakened. So instead of, instead of uh, uh, referring to the original research, what is done, secondary research or another, another uh, research is referred to. And it, the same thing happens in second one too. I derive this one from this source. That is something not to do. Next thing, use minimum quotes. Minimize the quotes that uh, quotes in your in your review section. Only one quote is used here. So Isser and Bigran concluded students' perception about the quality of marketing education at the state universities were lower than that of private universities. And other, if you see, they are written in, uh, in, uh, by paraphrasing. They are uh, used uh, by summarizing and use these techniques more frequently than quoting. So minimum quotes in writing, uh, in writing review. I wanted to finish much earlier because uh, as the party had informed me, we uh, let's keep our uh, one way. Thank you. Uh, we'll uh, take questions. Thank you very much. Dr. Tripathi. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I believe the session is open for questions and uh, uh, participants, uh, I believe, um, Akiwani must have seen, uh, there are a lot of questions in the chat box and on our YouTube channel. So we'll take uh, the questions one by one. Okay. Uh, I will try to take from uh, the beginning. Uh, uh, Angubhuti uh, ma'am says good morning, good morning, good morning to all. I think now it's almost afternoon. Uh, Rimpa Mondul uh, states, I had the opportunity to hear Dr. Achari in Melo. I, yes, uh, we have met in Melo and uh, this year too, uh, I'll, be in, I'll be presenting in Melo conference. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Rimpa uh, ma'am. Uh, Good morning to all. Uh, Dr. Chobe is there, my uh, good friend. Uh, I had contributed uh, one uh, article, one paper in the anthology that he edited. Dr. Chobe, namaste. Yes, yes. Namaskar, sir. Uh, namaste, can Dr. Chobe. Uh, sir, namaskar. Kaise hai, sir? How are you, sir? Uh, uh, I'm really good. Uh, uh, Everything going well. <laughs> It's uh, nice to nice to meet you virtually, and we would like to meet you once uh, in real sense, in physical sense, so that we can meet and uh, deliberate on some issues and exchange our uh, ideas with our students and colleagues. Uh, definitely, I would love to do that, uh, Dr. Chobe. I'm really sorry. Uh, I. If only uh, everything had worked well, I could have explained everything instead of, I mean, me being in hurry. Uh, the technical glitches uh, really disturb so many things. Thank you. Now, uh, Ra uh, uh, Rakhi, ma'am, uh, Piyus, Raza, okay, these are the uh, informations. Thank you. We'll try to use the information uh, now. Okay, this uh, Benugopal, uh, question from Benugopal. 
in social sciences in open surveys, what should be the selection criteria of sample? Because population is not available. Uh, market research at rural areas, agriculture related activities. I think uh, this is uh, quite beyond the scope of uh, today's session. Anyway, I'll try to uh, answer uh, 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 Of course, uh, there are problems in, uh, uh, in uh, getting responses. When it comes to getting responses, there are problems in uh, sampling too, there are problems. Let me uh, uh, give you one example, example from the study that we had carried out in 2004. It was on AIDS, uh, uh, AIDS patients in Kathmandu. So we wanted to study them. So initially it was really tough for us to identify. So we wanted to study on that, but locating AIDS victim was uh, not possible then. So we, we went to an organization and then from that organization, we got the name of uh, one person who was ready. We made him then uh, from that, that snowballing started. So in our case, I think snowballing uh, was working well. So if it's not available, what to do? If there are no participants, of course, if there are no participants, alternative uh, methods should be sought. I think uh, there are alternative. Uh, I think there is disturbance. Uh, can we request uh, participants to off their microphone? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, no, 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 no. It's it's all uh, all right. It happens. Uh, so we are just getting used to with this technical thing. Uh, uh, I was telling uh, about the alternative process. If uh, if there are no, I mean, participants for your study, what about using alternative method? So we wanted to study drinking habit among the among the people in certain area. When we went, no one was ready. So we uh, we wanted to study that. When it was not possible that way, we thought of alternative, and that was visiting the uh, visiting the garbage garbage in which garbage in which uh, the bottles were deposited. So we started studying that way. So instead of just, I mean, uh, uh, selecting or attempting to select the participants and studying them further, we decided to use alternative approach. So uh, maybe in that case, alternative approach will be, uh, you need to think about alternative approach. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered Benu Gopal, uh, uh, then uh, Venugopal has second question as well. The abstract itself normally is the, uh, is it necessary to include key terms near abstract? Okay. Uh, I think you, uh, your question refers to uh, article and the components in it. If it's uh, uh, the compo it's the question is related to components in research article, I will say in, in, in uh, subjects particularly uh, related to science or engineering or even social science, uh, writing keywords is important because from the keyword, the reader can decide. So those who do not have time to uh, read even abstract will look uh, keywords. Okay, these are the keywords. Okay, the keywords uh, are relevant for me. I am going to study this article. Otherwise, why should I spend that long time reading the reading 300 words, around 300 words? If uh, that's one, and keywords are important from another perspective too. I think from a source engine perspective too, uh, the keywords are important. Uh, thank you. Uh, ben Gopal uh, uh, has another question uh, as well. Uh, what is the best way of presentation of bibliographic detail at the end uh, of the concern phase or at the end of the thesis or research work? It depends on the tradition which you are following. If my university says write foot at footnote, which happens in uh, uh, which happens in uh, law papers often, so they demand uh, you to write. Uh, in footnote, some demand you to write is end note. So uh, I think you have to uh, to get answer to that. You have to uh, you have to take into account which uh, type, which uh, genre, or which uh, discipline you are writing. 
and uh, these things that I mentioned. Kripal Bandari, uh, Bandari has written, could you please uh, name the journal? Uh, we had started publishing Bodhi, uh, I'll write uh, the name, Bodhi Interdisciplinary Journal, I think uh, now it's clear I don't know to write. And uh, from 2019, we have started publishing Polysemy. So these are the two journals that we publish. Uh, and if they are, I mean, scholars uh, from biotechnology, uh, there is uh, Nepal uh, Journal of Biotechnology, uh, and I'm language editor there. Uh, Kripal, I think I answered, Bodhi and Polysemy. Kindly put me some light on wild card search. Okay, so I was telling about wild card search. Uh, let me clarify, I think. Uh, or there is why as well. There is when as well. If you write what and then and or why or etc., then it takes a lot of space. Instead of doing that, just write W. It brings all information. So. Uh, we are not sure about C O L O R or C O L O U R. In that case, to C O L, and then uh, uh, then there will be that strict mark. It sorts is C O L O R, C O L O U R. Both. I think uh, this uh, will be useful uh, or uh, this help. Uh, uh, Dr. Balbreet uh, asked that if it's not clear, I think uh, I can uh, I'll, try, I'll clarify later. Uh, Sudhir uh, had, has written a very knowledgeable uh, session. Thank you, Dr. Sudhir. Uh, Manohar. Uh, uh, Excuse me, sir. Yeah, yes, please. Sir, we have a question from uh, outside this meet. Uh, uh, if you may permit me to tell please, the question. Please, please. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, what are the main differences between a research article, review paper, and research paper? Okay. Uh, so, research paper... Uh, are, uh, uh, is the term generally used by people in literary studies because it refers to, and of course, other people in other disciplines as well use, but there it's used uh, very much. Uh, research uh, paper as such refers to both argumentative and analytical uh, writing. So if you're writing, let's say, uh, why a particular character in Shakespeare's drama is presented this way, uh, it takes the form of research paper. Research article is more research based. So, and what was the next term? Yes, sir. Uh, review paper. Okay, review paper is uh, is a paper that uh, reviews a high-level article. So, it's it's uh, a paper that uh, exclusively focuses on the studies done by other people. So, what corpus is studied? The corpus that is studied is others' publication. So, in review paper, what is done? The papers written by other scholars is studied, whereas in research paper, okay, argumentative as well as analytical papers, uh, uh, they come under that domain, whereas research article is article in which uh, the uh, tools, techniques of uh, research are used. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered. Uh, uh, Another question, otherwise I'll yes, read sir. from, yeah, please. Yes, sir. Uh, there's another question from a fellow batchmate. Uh, how to cite a reference for a literature review? Is there any specific method? Uh, it's the same. So if, uh, let's say, you are you are from engineering and you're following IEEE, that will be the reference style. If you are referring to the way we can uh, bring in reference section, there are multiple ways. Word document has that choice. If uh, you use the option uh, reference and then uh, use um, uh, enter the information manually, it automatically generates reference. That's one way. Another one you can go to Google Scholar and then there is that mark quotation, single quotation mark. If you click to that, it shows different styles of citation uh, for that paper, and you can just copy and 
based 18 reference section but uh, because we are in and uh, we are uh, already exposed to the machines that i refer to why not to use free machines like uh, mendeley or zotero you can uh, bring in reference uh, automatically from there so if you are uh, if your question was about the mechanism then uh, you can use any of these three mechanisms using the uh, using the uh, option that you have in word document one using from uh, or uh, quoting from google scholar and the next one is using reference management software so these are the three and which style to use if you are referring it it depends on the discipline you belong to if it's a uh, uh, let's say medical science they prepare another one in social science we uh, we we prepare apa in humanities they they they, they prefer mla style modern language associations style uh, uh, thank you uh, thank you sir uh, let's take the next question from the ch chat box uh, mm -hmm. from dr venugopal again in social sciences in open surveys is it required to test the hypothesis with uh, advanced statistics uh, uh, i think it's uh, uh, totally beyond the scope of presentation let's not go to that let's confine to uh, i'm sorry uh, ben gopal uh, because it's about hypothesis i think uh, about hypothesis we can run another two hour session and then if we discuss it will be useful uh, really sorry uh, next question uh, yes, sir. Uh, we have a question from the second Google Meet. Uh, according to you, what should be the structure of research? Data first or literature first? Uh, structure, I think uh, my opinion does not count. Uh, the opinion of destination is very important. Uh, if anyone is, uh, if anyone is corresponding article to Polysemy, uh, where I, I work as editor, uh, there, of course, introduction is uh, the first, followed by literature review. So, uh, who you are submitting or what your destination is uh, very important in deciding what to write first uh, or what to write second. So, I request you to refer to the format. What is the prescribed format for that document? Okay, the prescribed format is this. Fantastic. I'll write, I'll write abstract section in the end. It, because the journal asks me to write abstract section at the end. Otherwise, okay, Kaganda says you write abstract in the beginning, and journal says write abstract at the end. Uh, uh, I think Kaganda's say does not count at all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, concluding this session, we'd like to take one last question from Ms. Achal Tiwari. Can you explain, she asks, can you explain MLA 8 style of referencing? Uh, it's it's uh, a bit different from MLA seven. Uh, I think uh, if you re if you refer to uh, Purdue University's uh, website, that's one which keeps on providing updated information. Or if you go to MLA handbook uh, site and then get information, I think that will be the most authentic one. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. That would be a very informative and good session for all of us. Thank you for sharing so much information with us. Now I'd like to uh, doctor, uh, request Dr. Dhananjit Tripathi to please take over. All right. Uh, Krishna, can you listen to me? OK. So um, our Honorable Director, uh, Professor MC Govil has joined us. Uh, We'll begin the, the last session, which is a valedictory session. And to begin with, I would request the Honorable Director to kindly uh, say a few words to the participants and today's speaker. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Genji for delivering lectures and yeah, being guest agreed for the request uh, to Mr. I think we must have been enjoyed uh, this talk and the participants also have been benefited. And uh, as far as these five days are concerned, because uh, this has an objective, uh, as you all know, uh, the writing is a very important aspect of uh, teaching as well as uh, publication. And that was the basic objective of organizing this workshop. It was at times uh, in uh, particularly in Indian context, 
the writing is not as good as it is being expected from the good publishers and therefore we thought we should go for uh, this kind of a culture which will benefit not only in the terms of writing but maybe in terms of other aspects of uh, the uh, field and i believe that uh, the participants must have been benefited because uh, we have a very highly distinguished uh, speakers from different domains and and uh, from different places so nearly six countries are involved in uh, terms of experts so you are from india then australia usa england saudi arabia nepal the keynote address was delivered uh, by pk professor pk agarwal is a mba chairman nearly in all uh, total uh, participants is too large and, uh, this program has been enjoyed by all of you Uh, the main topics which are being covered is uh, publication ethics, various research methods and tools, uh, different type of uh, writing, academic as well as non-academic. As covered the paper writing also. The importance of the writing in your career is also very very important because at times we say if the document preparation is good, then that is. Speaks about your not only personality, but that it speaks about your uh, mental health also. As far as when you present your thoughts or when you present your uh, views, the writing makes uh, very very important. So that aspect is also was also important. There was a talk on the copyright and patent. Uh, like, uh, copyright, of course, is important, and at times we do not care bother about the copyrights. As far as the patent is concerned, I think we still lack in this area, and we have to increase uh, and have to learn how to get the patent of uh, the different different things. Something we do do uh, unknowingly, and we do do not even know that we can get the patent. So learning how to get the patent and how to be patented is uh, another important aspect. Uh, and then we have to really improve in this area. Research publication is of course is uh, very large, but uh, publishing in a good journal is again a daunting task, and that is to be done also. And I believe uh, that all the participants who have been uh, the part of this workshop must have been enjoyed all the talks and must have uh, have benefited uh, from the contents of this. And with this, I wish you all the best for your career. I thank all the speakers of this workshop and the organizing team. On the staff of the NIT, who has directed uh, your energy and support. This I end up my words. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much, sir. Now I request Dr. Dhananjay Tripathi, to uh, convener of this workshop, to please present the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, Sivani. <clears throat> It's indeed a great uh, privilege for me to extend the vote of thanks. i must extend my vote of thanks to the tiki team <clears throat> the tiki co tiki coordinators my departmental colleagues the hods the deans uh, the participants and all the speakers the back end team <clears throat> and especially i must thank to the honorable director uh, i want to say something uh, which is very realistic i hope you will take it and grant it uh, when um, i first had a discussion about this uh, uh, you know workshop with my director uh he told me that uh, we have come up with a lot of infrastructure development over the last 6 uh, 7 uh, months especially last two two years but we are not able to you know utilize up to the maximum extent and then i was thinking that how can i contribute because yes we uh, at a temporary campus we have been fighting out uh, the lack of infrastructure we have come up with a lot of things this conference room is a new and you know, the, the 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 vc facility is new i thought let's contribute from you know what i can contribute let's try for that and when i started thinking about this workshop i was um, i was fearing whether i will be able to do it or not but then i received all the supports from the colleagues uh, departmental colleagues my uh, colleagues in other departments and uh, i have was encouraged like anything uh, by my seniors especially my director i had this thought that if i'll go ahead and ask people uh, you know from abroad they will come they will join us uh, but then i had this thing that i have a backup of an it with me i have a backup of my seniors uh, well wishes of my uh, you know uh, my teachers and all and with all those well wishes and the backup of my of my team i'm very happy that uh, we have made it possible we have proved that yes we can do it 
and uh, even from Sikkim. Uh, I must thank uh, to the back end team of my students. I must thank to uh, you know Anirudh, uh, Anjali, uh, Krishna, Sushant, uh, Pintu, um, others. They have all worked very hard. Uh, there was a big, big, big problem uh, all of a sudden when Google uh, you know updated the policy. Uh, we had a. I still remember we had a meeting uh, early 3 a.m. Uh, on that day, and we come up with a solution. Uh, we had this uh, thought that we'll make it. Uh, public in all possible domain. We made it on YouTube. And uh, for the credit goes to all students, my seniors, the, you know, the backend team, and the director. It was not possible. I, I can dream of, but uh, the dream cannot be translated unless and until you have a backup team, unless and until you are pat on your, uh, you know, uh, on your back that, yes, you can do it. That is something which I received from my backend team and my director. I hope that we'll come up again uh, with uh, more such workshop. I would thank uh, Professor Acharya uh, for the session, all the speakers. We had uh, collected a lot of material resources from all the speakers. They are very generous. They have shared a lot of PPTs. They have shared a lot of uh, uh, documents. And we will be sharing it with all the participants. With this, um, uh, I thank you all, all the participants that you bear with us. You always joined on time. We maintain consistent 160 plus participants in Google Meet 1 and 2. And uh, the, the, the views over YouTube are more than 300. So it's a great achievement for the team, for the institute. Thank you so much. And don't worry about your certificates. We'll be reverting to you with electronic certificates. Uh, thank you so much. If any participants want to say something, uh, they can say our director is also here. Uh, so if, if you want to interact, uh, maybe two, three participants, if you want uh, to give any feedback, uh, you're most welcome. Uh, then we'll break and we'll uh, see you sometime in the future. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, good afternoon sir. Uh, good Deputy afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon, please. Uh, good afternoon, director, sir, and other all the senior professors and directors and uh, organizers. I am Dr. Bitla Srinivaslu, uh, Assistant Professor of English, B.V. Raj Institute of Technology from Telangana State, India. Really, it is an uh, insightful and enriching session, sir. Actually, I have been there for four days. So first day, I missed it. But after that, I have been really following this. Uh, the producers, organizing skills are very good. And all the right participants and who coordinated in between that uh, is fantastic. And mainly, I got uh, many uh, many of the things from the senior professors from different uh, universities from America and uh, Saudi Arabia and other countries, I think. Uh, but they are very good, sir. Really, I learned much from that, how to write, handle the proficiency of writing research papers and other things. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity, sir. Reporter, sir, thank you so much for your organizing skills and all everything. Thank you, director, sir, and other senior professors. Welcome. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Hello. Uh, yes, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, uh, sir. First of all, I would like to congratulate the whole team who has organized this program, and it was so wonderful and informative. Uh, I think uh, the topics which which was covered that was uh, really good, and I think it uh, it will help us a lot in uh, delivering a good research. And uh, yes, it was wonderful, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. I'm Dr. Radha Devi from Dr. Lankapalli Bulay College of Engineering, Vishakapatnam, Andhra Pradesh. Sir, it was indeed a wonderful experience being a part of this five-day workshop. All the sessions were very enlightening and the event on the whole was very well coordinated and organized kudos to all the organizers thank you so much for making it very enlightening and i also request the organizers to organize one such event on english language teaching thank you sir that's all from my side thank you sir uh, sir good afternoon sir yes go ahead Hello, sir. Sir, Hello. am I audible? Yes, go ahead. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, one at a time. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I am Prasad. 
from Andhra Pradesh, uh, working as an assistant professor of English at Pragati Engineering College from East Godavari district. And uh, all these sessions are very wonderful, sir. And uh, we learned uh, many new points from the professors. At the same time, I would request the organizer, Tripathi Rao, sir, to put uh, all the sessions' videos uh, to specify the mail IDs of uh, whoever registered. And uh, finally, we can learn much more uh, by uh, revising, uh, revising the things. Uh, uh, we can get some more uh, um, knowledge, and we can get uh, a, we can we can more expert in in that certain areas in writing, academic writing, and other things. So I would thank organizers and uh, uh, NIT, the complete team, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> you please keep visiting the institute website. We'll put a link on the on the home page. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, yeah. Can I speak? I request all the participants please speak one by one if you can. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon to one and all. I'm Dr. Raparna uh, from Hyderabad, Telangana State. Uh, kudos to Dr. Dharanjay Tripathi and the team and the director of NIT Sikkim. It was uh, a joyous workshop. In fact, I should say that it was wonderful and um, we were so insightful. We have learned so many things. In fact, I have visited Sikkim twice. I have been to Gangtok and the nearby places twice. This workshop has enhanced the beauty, in fact, uh, of the state and um, uh, NIT uh, Sikkim. Right. Uh, so thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. And uh, well done and keep it up. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, sir. Good afternoon, yes, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, myself, Dr. Maitli from uh, Erod, Tamil Nadu. Uh, the conference was meticulously planned and the way it was carried on was uh, very nice. I was even speaking to my principal, sir, uh, the way it was carried out. Uh, so the topics were everything related to research and it was so insightful, sir. Uh, kudos to the complete team and uh, thank you for uh, giving the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so shall I shall I say? Hmm, please go ahead. Yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Zipari. Uh, let me tell you this workshop, you know, the way you started, even the title of the workshop was so appropriate. It was not academic writing, but it was building proficiency in academic writing. So the management, the way you have decided to plan everything shows that yes, you, it was so well planned and appropriate one so i thank all the team entire team dr tripathi's team director nit sikq and the, all the people you invited this people like dr dooley dr chapel anurag agarwal sir then mrs miss campbell professor acharya today see we learned so many things from all these people and that was necessary i think because the entire education system is based on research and research only. If the person is able, if the teacher or the person is able to research properly, then he or she can be able to teach well. So I'm really thankful to the entire team and NIT team and director, sir, everyone, everyone. Thank you so much for this wonderful workshop. Thank you so much. I will stop here. Thank you. Hello. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Anish from uh, IT Uttarakhand, Gopishwar. So, sir, uh, thank you for this wonderful session. So, all the intellectual potency of expertise were very uh, highly intellectual and they gave their best of them. And we are thanks for that. And we learned a lot of from these uh, topics which you kept there. So thank you very much uh, for the organizing committee. We will be looking for the further time we will also just organize such another kind of topic in writing and speaking in English other way. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. So with this note, we will break here. Thank you so much. We'll see you in near future.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I would like to thank every participant for joining and wonderful remarks. Thank you. We'll conclude here.